Today I'm going to show you what's inside of an active engine mount and how it works to dampen vibration on your car's engine. Now on my Camry with the V6 engine, the active engine mount is actually the front engine mount located down inside of here. We've got these vacuum lines over here that feed off of the air intake and go down to feed that active engine mount. Now an engine mount would typically bolt to the subframe and then this part here would support the weight of the engine itself. You then have a bunch of vacuum lines and a vacuum switching valve that go to the bottom. Now on a traditional style mount, all you have is just this pure solid thick rubber that would absorb any vibrations coming from the drivetrain, transmit it through the subframe and into the vehicle. Now this engine also uses a shock mount to reduce the amount of shock as the engine rocks back and forth and a strategically paced vibration resonance damper that will dampen out any vibrations of a certain frequency that's traveling through the subframe. But taking a look at the engine mount itself, on the bottom here we have this diaphragm and you can see the rubber is actually cracking up and that's supposedly activated by this little hose here which has a vacuum switching valve that brings in engine vacuum through these long lines over here we've also got on the top here the steel part which has the three L brackets that ultimately support the weight of this engine mount onto the subframe then at the top here we have this bolt hole where the engine it actually is going to mount to now this vacuum switching valve is held on by what I think is the first square head screw I've seen in an automotive application. Usually they're like star point or hex. And I'll just remove that vacuum switching valve and pop off the vacuum one. This feels kind of cool, just moving this back and forth. I think I'm going to start by chopping off this lamination around this diaphragm so we can see what's inside. Okay, so I did not expect that. This is actually a hydraulic mount. You can see if I use a piece of my brother's old t-shirt here, some of that oil is actually coming out here. So this is actually filled with hydraulic oil, not just a vacuum controlled mount. So things are going to get a little bit messy here. I need to grab some more of my brother's shirts. Here I got my brother's old sock here and just use that to wipe off some of that hydraulic oil that's coming out. I'm going to take off this piece here. This is like a diaphragm. It's just made of like a rubber kind of material. Then inside of here we have a lot of hydraulic fluid. I'll just sap that up with my brother's old sock. I think next I'm going to chop off this bracket here. I think now I'm going to make a little cut along this way to see if we can get a little section of it. Alright, so with this top cover sectioned off here, I can pull apart the frame of the engine mount which mounts to the subframe from the internals. Now this part here is the one that mounts to the engine and it actually pops off like that. It's got this little nub on it and that's just inside of this little cavity over here. This is the part here that I'm going to start cutting apart because there's still hydraulic fluid leaking out. So we're going to see what's going on inside. Pry off these little nubs here. And I can pull off this bottom piece here. Just use my brother's old sock again to wipe that up. So it seems that this membrane here is what separates the hydraulic fluid from the vacuum that's coming in from the engine. Now obviously the vacuum can't suck any of that oil out so there's a separation between the two. So I'm going to chop this open so we can have a closer look. I'm going to have to chop a little bit more. So after opening this lid here, you can definitely see there's a diaphragm inside of here. It's really soft and squishy. And I can just peel it out. There you go. So this is kind of a rubbery diaphragm that separates this oily half here from the vacuum side over here where it sucks in from the engine. Now how this engine mount works is we have this frame piece which mounts to the subframe and we have this piece here which is a hydraulic bushing that has hydraulic fluid on this side and the engine mount part on this side and it has this little nub here where it sits inside and we apply hydraulic fluid pressure on this side it's going to cause it to stiffen up. Now on the bottom of all of this we have this diaphragm and inside of here it separates the engine vacuum which comes from the air intake system and is controlled through the pulsation of the vacuum switching valve to um, control the amount of vacuum pressure applied to this according to engine RPM. So for example let's say at a certain RPM the duty cycle of this switching valve is going to allow for a certain amount of pressure to cancel a certain frequency or vibration that could occur through this engine mount from the engine transferring its vibrations to the frame. Now this diaphragm separates the hydraulic side on the top here from the air side on the bottom here and it's going to move according to the pressure below it. That's going to cause the hydraulic fluid above here to also move inside of here and therefore dampen or change the frequency of your vibration. There's also a return passage
bridge over here to allow excess fluid from the top of the diaphragm to move back down to the bottom diaphragm here just as an extra holding area until the pressure changes. So I've got a simplified diagram of the engine mount with the rubber at the top here bearing the brunt force of the engine load and transferring it out through the metal frame. Just below that we have the upper fluid chamber and at the bottom of the mount we have the lower fluid chamber and they work together with this bypass here to transfer fluid between each chamber depending on the position of this diaphragm. Now this diaphragm is controlled through the vacuum, through the vacuum switching valve. As it moves down it's going to allow fluid to go through the bypass and fill this area up here and then as it loses vacuum it's going to move back up vice versa allowing fluid to go back down into the lower chamber. Now the amount of fluid in the upper fluid chamber changes the damping characteristics of this engine mount and thus the frequencies of vibration that transfer from the engine to the frame. Now in my Toyota TechStream software I can actually access that vacuum switching valve and turn it on and off while the vehicle is sitting here at idle with the engine on. Right now it's off and the engine is nice and smooth. I don't feel any vibration but when I turn it on I could definitely feel a little bit of vibration coming through the seat. Of course you can't see that through the camera. And now I'm going to demonstrate the effectivity of this active engine mount. I've got this little cup of water here and you can see that it's mounted to the radiator support which represents the frame of the vehicle. Obviously we want to separate it from the engine which is always going to be vibrating and we're going to test the damping of the active engine mount as I cycle it from off where it is now nice and smooth to on and then back off again. You can see that the water in there has a very small frequency of vibration. You can see here at idle with the active engine mount in the off position that the water is just moving around at a very high frequency which is virtually undetectable inside the cabin. And here now with the active engine mount in the on position at idle you can see that the frequency of that water shaking has changed and now has a lower frequency which is easier to be transferred inside of the cabin. Now although sometimes it's a little difficult to see in the camera exactly how an engine mount works the real feeling comes when you're sitting in the seat and you're feeling it through your butt. Now by playing with that vacuum switching valve I find that the most difference is actually at idle. Doesn't matter when you rev it up it's nice and smooth. And I'm going to do the old LS400 trick and rev the engine to see how well balanced it is. I got that up to about 6,000 RPMs and I'm actually pretty impressed for a V6 engine. Now that's pretty much all the components that go into an active engine mount on your car. Make sure you follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes footage and subscribe for more videos just like this one.